This concept is something that trips a lot of you guys up while trading. However, if you know how to identify them and how you could utilize it to support your trading, it will be extremely beneficial. And that is the concept of inducement. So the theory behind this is that it's in the name, inducement. It induces early buyers or early sellers to enter into the markets. By them entering into the markets early, that means it creates liquidity points where price will target for, either to accumulate more positions or distribute their positions at. Because if you look at it from the theory of how the market moves, the market simply moves from liquidity points to liquidity points. And where you have the most significant liquidity points are at your highs and lows. To be more specific, your swing highs and your swing lows. So if you recap, swing points are your free candle formations. This is a swing low. One, two, three. The second candle has the lowest wick. Essentially, it's the same thing for a swing high. One, two, three. The second candle has the highest wick, right? So those are your significant swing points. If you mark this out here. Swing highs and swing lows. Now, depending on where price is heading towards on the higher time frame, this will determine the characteristics of how price takes out that certain swing point. Because if you look here, this swing low doesn't get tapped into, but this one does. You have a swing low here. But compare this tap to this swing high over here. This swing high is very aggressive. It gets broken through with a full body closure. However, this swing low gets broken through with a wick. So what it's essentially doing is that it's distributing their positions at the swing highs. The swing highs become places where the market distributes their existing positions for profit, right? And the swing lows, when price sweeps those swing lows, what it's essentially doing is accumulating more positions, aka in this specific example, accumulating more long positions at these sell side liquidity before distributing it higher. Because the main factor that determines where the market moves is to satisfy buyers and sellers. Every time there's a buyer, there has to be a seller. Every time there's a seller, there has to be someone who's willing to buy. So the market moves in a way that transacts people's needs and supply. Hence why it moves from liquidity points to liquidity points, and hence why your swing lows and your swing highs have the most significant liquidity point. So that's the theory behind how the market moves. This is where inducement comes into play. As I mentioned previously, inducement induces early buyers into the market. Why is that? So look at this example, right? Low resistance sell side liquidity. This is your trend line liquidity. All this is simply doing, let's say your higher time frame is bullish. This low resistance accumulation over here creates significant key levels for sell side liquidities to form. Because you have to imagine, every time price taps into this trend line liquidity, and continues higher, if you look at it from a retail standpoint, what they are essentially thinking is that this level is going to hold because this is your classic trend line support. But if you use the theory of market transaction, you would note that all this is simply doing is creating what is known as inducement. And because it creates inducement, a lot of the times this scenario happens. Price comes down, takes out all of this liquidity before it continues higher. And you wouldn't mistake this for a market reversal to go bearish. The reason being, is because your higher time frame is bullish. That is simply all your inducement is. Your inducement induces early buyers and sellers into the markets to create a key level for sell side or buy side liquidity for price to come in, sweep that liquidity and accumulate more positions. Or vice versa, you can have inducement on the opposing side of your higher time frame. What does that mean? Imagine you are still bullish. This could also be seen as your inducement. On the lower time frame, this being your lower time frame, this was just a movement lower, right? Because on a higher time frame, this is a retracement. So on the lower time frame, the highs, they become low resistance buy side liquidity if they stay intact, right? If it gets taken out like that, then that's high resistance liquidity. But here, low resistance liquidity, which means they are also inducement. So when price has a market reversal here, to go from a sell program to a buy program, this inducement now becomes your target for price to distribute towards and exit out of the positions for profit. I mentioned this at the start of the video. Inducement can be where price accumulates or distributes, depending on what side of the market it forms in relation to your higher time frame direction. And that is simply all inducement is. So once you know how to identify inducement, the most simple way you could use inducement is for your targets. That's the most simple way. That's the first and main most simple way. The second way you could use it is for your entries, but not specifically just your entries, but also for your stop losses, right? So let's look at a few examples. So here, your higher time frame is clearly bullish. On a daily, it's bullish. 
you have this market structure shift to the upside, discount arrays being respected, premium arrays being disrespected. So your high time frame is bullish. Price comes down to this mitigation block on your sell side curve of this market maker buy model. This being your overall drawn liquidity. Right, so on a higher time frame, price came down to this mitigation block, and that is where we can anticipate for bullish price action. If you drop down to the hourly, price is fractal. So even though I'm dropping from a daily to the hourly, it works the same with every other time frame. You just need to identify your higher time frame and your lower time frame. But here, on the hourly, what does price do here? Gives you a market structure shift to the upside. This market structure shift confirms the realignment of your hourly direction with your bullish higher time frame direction. In this case, it is my daily time frame. If you look to the left, again, same thing, price is fractal. This is another market maker buy model. And that is your overall drawn liquidity in the form of your original consolidation. But look closely at what you get here after you get the smart money reversal. Over here, this high, this high, and these highs over here. What do they all have in common? They are all low resistance liquidity. Each swing high that gets implemented after the other one, they fail to take out the previous swing high. So that means it's inducing sellers to enter into the market at these specific key levels. Because what they are seeing here is some form of a resistance level. So they anticipate for price to continue lower. But because they are unaware of the higher time frame being bullish, this is where you can anticipate it to become taken out later on in the future. Because above here, where they entered, there will be abundance in stop loss and buy stops. So overall, that will accumulate a large sum of buy side liquidity which is also your inducement. So this is a key level for a significant pool of liquidity. That could become your immediate target before this overall target over here. You always want to see this in line with your market direction because it doesn't give you explicit confluence, but it gives you implicit confluence in the fact that you know these highs over here will get taken out sooner or later because that's what the market just has to do, right? It has to facilitate market transactions. So after you had this break to the upside, if you continue playing price out, this is where you can have an entry. But if you look to the left, there is also a minor low resistance liquidity here. When you have low resistance liquidity, or your inducement as you would say, that is opposite your market direction. So here, this one right here is supporting your market direction. Because if you was bullish, these become your target. So these ones right here, they are opposing inducement. And that is because you are bullish. You wouldn't necessarily want to see price take out this low. If it takes out that low, if it also takes out that low, it would be understandable. But depending on how it takes out that low, most likely it wouldn't justify a complete market reversal. But going back to the main point, when you are trying to anticipate which opposing inducement levels is going to likely get taken out, it is significantly difficult to tell until it actually happens. So in those type of scenarios, to avoid you getting stopped out, my stop loss wouldn't necessarily be there if I wanted to reduce the likelihood of my position being taken out. Because a lot of times, when you have inducement like this, price could take out that inducement, but still protect this long-term low and continue higher. So as you would guess, if you want to increase the likelihood of you staying in this position, then your stop loss wouldn't necessarily be where the inducement is because this is still inducement, even though it's opposing your market direction. So your stop loss would be at this long-term low because then that protects you for if price swe sweeps, that sells our liquidity and continues in your market direction, you are still protected. So that is where you can place your target and that is where you can place your stop loss. Continue to play price out. You can see here, again, you get a swing low. And this is where it starts to get much more easier to anticipate which low is likely to keep to be protected. This swing low right here, on the lower time frame, that is your inducement. Right? It's a swing low, sweeps, and price is continuing higher. So you would anticipate this low to now stay protected. Because you anticipate for this low to stay protected, because it's already sweep, because it's already swept a previous sell side liquidity. That means these lows should stay protected, ideally. So if you didn't enter into the first position over here, this is where you can enter into the second one. Bullish order block, price comes back into that bullish order block, and your stop loss would be here because it swept the inducement. So you ideally want to see this low stay protected. And again, you would target up above here. So if you keep playing price out, you can see it melts through this inducement, which supports your market direction with ease and completes your market maker buy model. Daily, as you can see, takes out your immediate drawn liquidity. So that was a short video covering the basics of inducement. It's a concept that shouldn't be overlooked once you understand market transactions. I hope you guys found that video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below in the comments. And like always, take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.